Mm -hmm. Are we seeing it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Katarina Park, and I will be graduating from UC Santa Cruz in just a few weeks with a bachelor's in environmental studies and economics with a concentration in geographic information systems. Um, I have been working for NOAA's ground fish ecology team since January um, at the Southwest Fishery Science Center as a population dynamics analyst looking at kelp rockfish life history and trends. Um, I work with fishery biologists, statisticians, and GIS experts on a kelp rockfish um, stock assessment using the open data source PSCO. All right. So um, just for a little bit of background information, some of you may already know this and have been studying kelp rockfish, um, but kelp rockfish are true masters of the kelp forests. Um, they thrive in coastal waters ranging from Fort Bragg, California near Mendocino to Bahia San Carlos in Baja, California. They've adapted to life among the kelp beds and rocky reefs, and they are the most dependent of all rockfish on the kelp ecosystem, hence their name. Um, so you can spot them hanging out in the kelp canopy or lurking around the rocky reef face. However, they are often kept out of the bottom areas by their rivals, the aggressive gopher and the black and yellow rockfishes. So let's take a look at some data on uh, kelp rockfish trends. So using our studio, um, I've created these plots uh, showing the difference between recreational and commercial kelp rockfish catch. Um, these were both made by combining multiple open data sources. Um, on the left, the data ranging from 2005 to 2022 is from RecFin, which is available to anyone online. And this commercial data on the right is from PacFin, also available to anyone. Um, PacFin did not start until the 80s, hence the lack of data beforehand. Um, but both of these plots show the weight of uh, kelp rockfish caught in metric tons over time for both types of fisheries. And uh, most data, again, used to make these graphs was open source. So on the y-axis, we can see that um, kelp rockfish is primarily a recreational species and not usually targeted by commercial fisheries. Um, and that has always been the way it is and, and still is. Um, but I think the most important thing to note in this graph is that uh, in 1999, the Marine Life Protection Act was established, creating all the MPAs along the California coast. So since kelp rockfish don't tend to move around too much, um, we can see that establishing MPAs did uh, result in a significant impact on reducing kelp rockfish catches. All right, so what is PSCO? Um, PSCO is a long-term sampling program led by a team of scientists from four core campuses, including Oregon State University, Stanford, UC Santa Cruz, and UC Santa Barbara. Um, since being established in 1999, PSCO has been gathering a wealth of biological, chemical, and physical information about ocean ecosystems in the near shore uh, portions of the California current large marine ecosystem. Um, their goal is to create a well-managed and long-term archive of the valuable data collections and make them accessible to researchers everywhere. Um, they also strive to produce metadata to assist research in interpreting and analyzing this wealth of information. Um, but the main thing about them is that to collect data, they scuba dive. Oops. All right. So to get access to PSCO's data, um, it's made readily available to users through a variety of data access applications. Um, thanks to partnerships with Oregon State University, Data One, and the Pacific Rocky Intertidal Monitoring Program at UC Santa Cruz, um, anyone can access this data. So whether you're a scientist, researcher, or just a curious citizen, um, this data is available at your fingertips. All oh, right. So how are we at NOAA going to use um, PSCO to make a kelp rockfish assessment? How are they related? And what is our end goal? So we are gonna use the kelp rockfish catch data that we just looked at in those graphs earlier to harness the power of time series modeling um, to predict future trends in fisheries catch and stock abundance for kelp rockfish. 
So specifically, we're going to be applying this model to PSCO's time series model that they've already developed, um, which is some of the most reliable and accurate data available for kelp rockfish catch. Um, so this is actually a groundbreaking approach because it's the first time a subtitle scuba survey has been used to do a kelp rockfish stock assessment. Um, both stock assessments and time series models are important for sustainable fishery management. So our approach provides a more focused and nuanced view of future trends. Um, and then our goal is not only to determine the size of the kelp rockfish population that we can safely target, but also to provide guidance to fisheries managers on how many um, can be sustainably harvested per year. Um, so as mentioned earlier, PSCO conducts subtitle scuba surveys. Um, on the map on the left here, the green points uh, show the PSCO sites all along the west coast. And then zoomed in, we have the Monterey Bay, Bay Area region, Monterey <laughs> area region here um, with the PSCO sites in green again, and then marine protected areas denoted by the pink shapes. Um, so these figures on the right describe how the the piece of the divers collect their data. Um, so what they do is they identify all living fish within a measured space known as a transect, and they try to record fish sizes to the nearest centimeter. Um, the pictures on the right show how they do that accurate sampling. So they have three levels in the water column, the bottom, the mid water, and the surface canopy. And there are always two divers in a sampling area, as you can see. So in this top picture, we have phase number one with one diver in the mid bottom and the other at the bottom. Diver two at the top counts number of midwater fish and stays just a little bit ahead of the bottom diver while the bottom diver lays tape to mark the transect and counts the bottom fish. Bottom picture shows phase two um, and this is occurring in the canopy and uh, midwater. So diver two now lays the tape at the top and counts the number of canopy fish while diver one's sole purpose is just to be um, a safety stop. So this entire process is conducted at each piece of the site. So we are going to use GIS to calculate the average depth, minimum depth and maximum depth, as well as the percent of substrate um, around a buffer of each piece goes to scuba site on the California coast. So we're going to use depth and, depth and substrate layers provided by um, the California Seafloor Mapping Project. I believe someone earlier asked for um, seafloor layer information, and this would be a perfect resource for that. Um, we are going to use those layers to figure out exactly how much rock is within the buffered area. Um, and again, depth and substrate are environmental variables that will also um, inform the stock assessment. Um, we will also be using zonal statistical tools to summarize rasters, uh, whatever zone we're interested in around the PSCO site. Um, we'll use tools to take input raster cells that overlap that area and calculate those statistics that we are looking for. And then this is just, example of the Pisco sites in Santa Cruz. Uh, so we just, just created some 100 meter buffers around the sites. Um, and those will be the areas that we're investigating. Um, the pink is our reef layer. Um, and if you are interested in following the status of this project or have any questions, you can reach me via email or you can check out my GitHub repository where I have all of the code um, constantly being updated for the development of this stock assessment and map. Thanks so much. Any questions? Uh, From that, that last, uh, maybe two slides ago of the, this that, yeah, one more back. So that whole team, because I want to paralleling the coastline, that's all marine protected area. That this is um, a reef layer. So the marine protected areas are going to be those polygons. Oh, okay. um, so this little, yeah. I believe this little line on the edge right here is a marine yeah. protected area. Oh, wow. I yeah. didn't realize. I mean, I just choose to look at what we have up there. I didn't realize it was classified as an MPA. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? 
Is that natural breeze? I didn't know it was that kind of narrow. And so yeah, I assume the, the red here is the hard interpreted hard. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you.